Hello everyone and welcome to CRAM Surge, clinical research appraisal and methodology for surgical trainees, where we pick a paper fresh from the press on a hot general surgical topic. We review it for you, we present it for you, we critique its methodology for you and provide top of the field expert opinion and teaching on research appraisal and methodology. My name is Gio Perrin and together with Professor Sababala Subramanian and Maria Digby we bring you Crumb Surge from the wonderful region of the Yorkshire and the Humber. Today we will be talking about an interesting systematic review and meta-analysis on appendicitis and trends suggesting a possible spontaneous resolution in uncomplicated settings as corroborated by analysis of pre- and post-COVID data. I'll leave you to it. Real. Okay, so uh, we picked this paper, as uh, Prof just mentioned, where it's about uh, spontaneous resolution of uncomplicated appendicitis, um, and that being the um, explanation for the apparent increase in proportion of complicated appendicitis during the COVID-19 pandemic. So the systematic review and meta-analysis which was uh, published in the World Journal of Surgery in May 2023. So the background to the study, uh, appendicitis, obviously the most common surgical emergency, um, and the doctrine is usually early uh, surgical intervention helps to prevent complications such as perforation or phlegmon. Um, and during the COVID-19 pandemic, there was a shift away from operative intervention due to uh, sort of concern about aerosol generated procedures and contacts with COVID patients. Um, there is already a good body of evidence that shows um, uncomplicated appendicitis can be safely managed with antibiotics alone or even with NSAIDs. Um, however, there is uh, again a body of evidence that shows there is a risk of progression to complication or recurrence that's quite high in and around the order of about 30%. So, as I said, the, the aim of this study was to try and identify why there was an apparent increase uh, supported by several different studies in the proportion of complicated appendicitis during the pandemic. And this paper's aim was to see if this was due to a um, spontaneously resolved uncomplicated appendicitis having never sort of presented or been diagnosed. Um, I know that uh, you like this PICO format, so um, in terms of the, the PICO, the patients would be patients with appendicitis. The intervention was COVID-19 pandemic. The comparison was during pan the first wave of the pandemic and then the similar time frame, same period, one year previously, so pre-pandemic. Um, and the outcome was whether the patient had complicated or uncomplicated appendicitis. The methods, it was a systematic review and meta-analyses. Um, they used a search on uh, PubMed and Embase using just these terms that you can see on the slide in front of you. They only use these, these search terms, appendicitis or appendectomy and COVID or SARS-CoV-2 or coronavirus. They included studies which reported uncomplicated and complicated appendicitis, as I said, one year pre-pandemic and during the first wave and they tried to match those time periods that they used. They did a meta-analysis with funnel plots and Eggers test used to try and address the publication bias. They didn't appear to have any other form of uh, attempting to mitigate the bias. Their outcome measure was complicated or uncomplicated appendicitis numbers, and this was as defined by each individual report. There was no overarching definition of what constituted complicated or uncomplicated appendicitis. And they assumed that the studies which were reporting complicated or uncomplicated didn't change their definitions between these study periods. Your inclusion and exclusion criteria. So the inclusion criteria, as I've already said, was the first wave of the pandemic. There was data available for the corresponding time period pre-pandemic. And in some cases, they used an average over several years uh, or estimated the exact numbers from an, a mean or average that was given and they included texts that were available in English, German or Scandinavian. And their exclusion criteria were if there was an unclear definition of what constituted complicated or uncomplicated appendicitis, 
if there was any implication in the text that there was a change in the referral area or service provision in the, that particular uh, hospital or region during the study period, if there's any incomplete or inconsistent data. And they also excluded any studies which strongly changed their management approach to appendicitis with the COVID pandemic um, towards a conservative approach. And they, they state that they exclude anyone with an extremely small sample size as well. In terms of descriptive results, they ended up including 63 reports in their study, which covered 100,000 patients over 25 countries. And looking at the, just the raw numbers, they, they found that there were fewer cases of uncomplicated appendicitis in the pandemic period compared to the pre-pandemic period. They went on to look at the risk ratio, uh, at the proportions, which is in this first column, um, for complicated versus uncomplicated appendicitis. And they found that there was an increased proportion of complicated appendicitis during the COVID pandemic with a risk ratio of 1.39. And that this risk ratio was particularly prominent in the single center studies, 1.61. Um, so they have demonstrated an increased proportion of complicated appendicitis during the COVID pandemic and that this was the most prominent in single centres. Um, this is in keeping with other um, large studies. Um, they also demonstrated fewer published reports of uncomplicated appendicitis, and this is mainly in small centres during the COVID pandemic, and that's seen at the right-hand side of the screen. Produced a forest plot um, and used funnel and eggers tests. This strongly suggested a publication bias um, and therefore they calculated the posterior probability, apparently, of a difference in pre and pandemic points in time. And when they did the stood this uh, posterior probability, they excluded the small centres because they could see that there was a publication bias. Um, and when they did this, they found that there was um, an, no significant difference between the numbers of patients presenting with complicated appendicitis during a pre or pandemic level but that there remained a significant difference in the number and I say number not proportion of patients who presented with uncomplicated appendicitis between those pre and during pandemic periods. This is just that funnel plot and I guess tests showing strong suggestion of publication bias, which it didn't really address other than to say there was a publication bias. So in conclusion, they just sort of went from we have shown that there are fewer reports of uncomplicated appendicitis to sort of, this is this is causation. And um, they suggested that a decrease in the incidence of uncomplicated appendicitis during the pandemic is responsible for the apparent increase in complicated appendicitis. And um, they did acknowledge a significant heterogeneity between the studies and that they hadn't defined what complicated or uncomplicated was. So I've really pass to you. Yeah, of course. So, uh... This paper overall, uh, a bit of critique now. Uh, obviously, as Dan started by saying from the beginning, there were some definition issues, particularly for what is complicated appendicitis. And having learned now the background of this person, they could have considered including studies that have graded the appendicitis uh, depending on a specific score to reduce heterogeneity from the start. Uh, Another thing, because when we do systematic reviews and meta-analysis, we need to follow the Prospero guidance in order to follow a systematic, uh, the PRISMA guidelines, in order to follow a systematic way of doing the systematic review. Um, the search algorithm on that, um, uh, sorry, I, I went a bit carried away there. So for the PRISMA to start with, they were, it was not really followed from the start because the study is not registered on the Prospero database, which is a big database for systematic reviews. And according to the PRISMA guidance, uh, all systematic reviews should be registered on that in order to have a generic database and not to have um, duplicate studies. Um, following after that, the search algorithm that they used, it's quite generic, it goes appendicitis or appendectomy or COVID or SARS coronavirus. And they said they said PubMed rather than Medline. So uh, we don't know really whether they had um, some kind of software that they used that uh, auto meshed those terms in order to have more specific results on the subject. Um, in terms of the bias, obviously, um, 
the plots of the meta-analysis assessed for publication bias. However, there was no bias assessment of each individual study from the two assessors uh, with a, a Robbins tool uh, according to the Prisma guidance or any other tool at all. Um, another thing is that they did not consider in each study the strength of the lockdown in the country that the study was mentioned because let's say that you had a country with a very strong lockdown chances are that you're going to see even lower numbers than those ones so that might have skewed the data a bit and the study went from uh, assumption directly to uh, causation rather than the resolution of confounding i'm going to show you a slide in a moment about it but overall that I would, according to this, I would not really change my routine practice depending on what we saw, because we already know that significant, if we've got informed decision making in acute appendicitis, which is diagnosed on a scan, then we can offer the patient antibiotics versus surgery. And if they don't have an appendicolith there on the scan, maybe we can consider NSAIDs in some more recent studies. So that's what I would offer them and explain that I would go for it. I wouldn't really change my practice according to this. And, Next slide, please. Uh, this is the graph I wanted to talk about. So this is an industry graph, and this is where they try to resolve their confounding. And they, they show that in, um, if you see on the single centers, they've got quite a lot of data, whereas they, they don't have as much data for the big centers and regional centers. And what they've tried to show on this, they've excluded those and then they've analyzed the multi-center and the regional data, trying to show that actually there is difference and that they can prove a point. But that's the only resolution of confounding we've got, really. And I got a bit confused about this graph and whether actually whether this can prove causation or was it a very clever graph to show the regression to the mean that they showed and that actually they've used the random effects model and the more random variables they use, the better, and the more of a confounding resolution they try to do with this graph, the more they try to convince us otherwise. So I'm a bit puzzled by this. And I think um, the paper raises some questions of how the methodology started from the start, uh, particularly not registering with Prospero, et cetera. So that, that's my thoughts on it. And next slide, Dan. And some suggestions, maybe we could ask the team to provide the registration. I mean, maybe they did it and they didn't thought, think of mentioning it. Uh, have they used any automated software? Have they, uh, can they potentially assess the selected studies for bias one by one with a tool of choice prior to analyzing? And we'd like a bit more info, info regarding how, conf how they resolve the confounding on this study and how exactly was the Bayesian analysis performed and what parameters exactly did they use? Uh, because it's quite unclear how they came to the conclusion that, oh, we've regressed to the mean, therefore we conclude to the results uh, that we thought that we would conclude. So a bit complicated, really. That's it, thank you. As usual, a brief summary of what we discussed. As highlighted by the presenters, uh, we do take a few issues concerning um, the search algorithms as well as the definition of uh, appendicitis complicated or uncomplicated. From a methodological standpoint, we reiterated the importance of assessing the quality of the included studies. Um, we are going to inquire to the authors about registration um, with Prospero. But the main issue we discussed is the fact that while there is some epidemiological data to suggest that the interpretation of potential spontaneous resolution of uncomplicated appendicitis could be an occurring phenomenon. Uh, the causation between the data and the actual phenomenon is not demonstrated by this meta-analysis. And certainly the title of the paper itself seems to be heavily suggestive of the possibility of this link. So we feel that the interpretation of the data should be a little bit more cautious before jumping into the conclusion that if that uncomplicated appendicitis resolve itself. Furthermore, we discussed what other studies could have been conducted to corroborate this hypothesis.
including, for, for example, a large insurance data set where an analysis of insurance data could provide some insight about the epidemiology of complicated and uncomplicated appendicitis um, before and after COVID. Uh, we will ask all these questions to the authors as usual. Thank you everyone for tuning in and listening. Until next time, keep ramming your life with our surgical podcast.